What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and we call this the sound of music. Baby, we can't let Shay have all the fun, can we? <laughs> there are a few things that'll get the blood flowing like a 131 all spun up, all right? <laughs> Road King Kong just does something real special for me. It's like that one girl who does that one thing you really like. And you know the thing I'm talking about. The one you'd never want your mama to know about. Heading to meet up with Shay Lisi right now. I've been riding with her on my on the Bangkok bagger, on the mail order glide, my gold wing, while she rides around her sportster. And while having two green bikes is certainly fun, uh, she's been having a lot of fun making lots of noise on that shiny sportster. And that just made me want to go break out the Road King, all right? And of course, this is a raffle bike. This bike is getting raffled off with 100% of the proceeds going to charity. It's all going to benefit the Forgotten Angels. <laughs> so I don't really like to take it out too much because I just get, uh, like, I don't want anything bad to happen to it. Like, this bike is doing good things, all right? And once somebody owns it, once somebody has it, you can just do whatever you want with it. <laughs> but I want to make sure whoever does win this bike that they get something that they're really going to be able to just absolutely abuse. I want you to get this bike ready to wail on it, ready to abuse, which means I can't abuse it too much. Dude, the guy who wins the bike is probably also like, why do you keep putting gas in it from this sketchy ass gas station? It's like banging down crack whores without it, without keeping your Ranger wrapped. Huh? Yeah, man, you people are crazy out there, dude. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Mm, prepare yourself. <laughs> Dang, I was empty. 4.9 gallons of the hood's finest. Hey, man, you take it easy, all right? What can I say, y'all? Everyone kind of wonders. They're like, man, Shade Tree Surgeon sure lives in a in a nice house. I mean, I don't think it's that nice of a house, but it's a, it's a nice house. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's because my house is in the freaking ghetto. Trust me, it doesn't bother me at all, but we're having to shoe off fentanyl fiends off our front porch sitting there nodding off on the reg, all right? I just uh, serves to keep you on your toes, you know? All right, you little shitbird. Are you ready to see if we can go eat at the OCC Roadhouse or not? Last time we couldn't even get a table. I don't think he's ridden both of our Harleys to work yet. We always go on our Hondas. I rode Madam Hex's Honda last time. Wait, no. I rode Madam Hex's Harley last time, so we've officially not ridden Road King Kong and the Green Goblin up there. Two named bikes, two named Harleys, and there's a difference. All right, let's rock and roll. For everybody who thinks like we're so famous and we get everything we want, we couldn't even get a seat <laughs> at the OCC Roadhouse. And don't forget to turn off your choke later. The thunder rolls, baby. <laughs> the high price of fashion. Be really nice to have an RV. That one looks like it suits me just fine. How about it? Shade Tree Army, wraps our garage, it's the road. Ooh, talking about hitting the road. Rolling thunder, baby, I love it. Willem Dafoe's The Green Goblin certainly sounds the part and it looks the part because that's an amazing looking motorcycle if you ask me, but it doesn't quite walk the walk. You listen to it run, it talks the talk. But man, uh, I will tell you, those old carbureted 1200 Sportsters, I mean, I would say they're a dog. They're not like insanely slow, but I wouldn't call them fast. Now, the 131, this one walks the walk, baby. This thing's a goddamn rocket ship. We're gonna have to bring that little Sportster up to speed. I think we're gonna go the blockhead route and do a hammer performance kit. Maybe not as crazy as he's going because it is Shay riding on it. So I think for what he's gonna do to his, we can probably get about the same results with Shay riding hers with a like 90 horsepower kit. We'll see. She does weigh a lot less than me and a lot less than blockhead. I can't even imagine what, what that little Sportster would do at like 90 to 100 horsepower because I mean I, I literally can't imagine it. it the 1200 carbureted Sportster makes what like 40 or 50 horsepower at the wheel I doubt it makes much more than that now the fuel injected ones definitely made more but the carbureted 1200s like if they're doing 50 horsepower I'd be shocked 
What would it feel like to literally double that horsepower? I cannot even imagine. The difference on this 114 when Burt's Barracuda put the 131 in it, that was, I think, stock, what do these make at the wheel? Like 90 horsepower or something like that? Maybe between 80 and 90 horsepower from a 114 at the wheel. And it took it to 135 horsepower at the wheel. Now, that ain't doubling it, but it's, it's a lot of horsepower, and the difference was absolutely breathtaking. Now, double, like double, from 50 horsepower to 100 horsepower. I, I can't even imagine what that's going to feel like. I can't even imagine, but I want to imagine. So now we got to do it. <sighs> what man can do. Every time I look at an operation like this, I'm just blown away by humanity. I mean, I know some people hate it. They're just like, well, nature, and look at these things that we're doing. It's bad for I mean, man is of nature, so therefore everything we do is natural. And I'm firmly of the belief that one day Mother Earth will scratch us off her backs like fleas. And, and after a little while, you'll never even know that we were here. But then you look at something like us building a bridge, building a bridge concrete over water with all these people working together and engineers and and, and and all this stuff happening i'm like man the human being human beings are pretty freaking amazing i'm not saying that what we do is always good or always in our best interest but that doesn't stop us be, from being pretty freaking amazing man American troopers are out collecting donations today. We got two posted up. I see them do that sometimes. You'll be coming off the bridge, so they'll post up a trooper right there for some just for some uh, PAL donations right at the end of the bridge because they're trying to get people speeding off the bridge. And then they post one a little bit after that because you think like, oh, I just saw one after the bridge. There's not going to be another trooper. I can just speed now. And then a couple miles later, there's another one to catch everybody who thought they were smart. All right. It's like 1 p.m. on a Tuesday. So hopefully this time around, we can we can get a table at the OCC Roadhouse. I, from everyone I hear, the food's freaking amazing. So I'm starving. I'm excited to try it. something I didn't know. Apparently Paul Sr. is actually a pescatarian. Pescatarian is somebody who doesn't eat any meat from the land, so that's uh, basically seafood only, which I can get behind because I love seafood. Only fish and bugs from the ocean. Not bugs from the land, bugs from the ocean. There's a difference. Shrimp are gross. I love shrimps. They're ocean cockroaches. I know, delicious ocean Disgusting. cockroaches. Give me more for me. Okay, more for Disgusting. me. We're going to live life in Paul Sr.'s shoes today. Day when I got the vegan hamburger, the impossible burger, because I just love the dichotomy of going to a big badass biker bar and getting a veggie burger. I might have gotten a vegan burger because that's the only way Paul Sr. who only eats fish eat a burger, but I still got meat. I did get calamari and I got a bacon, well it was supposed to be shaved, but she doesn't she doesn't dig on pork, alright? I did get a bacon horseradish sauce and I put it in my burger. So in theory, I'm eating vegetarian, but I'm really not. I'll cut it and a half, you can have a bite before I put the bacon sauce on it. What do you expect me to do, all right? It might be a vegan burger, but we're still putting bacon sauce on it. Possible burger as done by OCC Roadhouse with bacon remoulade on it. <laughs> and a single bite taken out of it, because she at least wanted to see what an impossible burger tastes like. She doesn't like the taste of beef, so she didn't it like it. It tastes like a regular burger. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. For all the naysayers out there who really hate the idea of, of an impossible burger of fake meat, let me tell you, it's really hard to tell the difference. It's not like I, I tell the difference. It's not like I need to pick this. I don't need to eat this. I would eat a beef hamburger just the same. But I'll tell you, you really can't tell the you really can't tell the difference. Fried squid, how can you go wrong, man? If it's good enough to fish with, it's good enough for me. I don't mm. Delicious. Shaylisi with the awesome idea of upgrading the burger with a fried green tomato. So take note if anybody's watching this. Because it's delicious. Always good hanging out with the folks at Birch. We stopped by the showroom, ended up meeting a couple people who watch the channel who are like down here on vacation. I love that people come down to Tampa or Clearwater on vacation and they stop by Birch Barracuda. I think that's so freaking cool because let me tell you, it's not just what we have with Birch. 
is is literally like a, just a bunch of our friends work here. Like the people here are really cool, and not only, they're helping us out a lot. They're helping out Forgotten Angels a lot with the Road King and the charity that they're doing. But they're also just good dudes. Like we sat next to Ryber when we were eating. We love Beth. We love Gunner. They're just good freaking people. So uh, I like I like that people are coming down here on vacation. That's cool. But for us, it's gonna rain because it's Florida. And once you hit like three or four or five in the afternoon, it starts pouring. So let's roll. I don't want to repeat it yesterday. All right, let's try to beat the rain and crazed Florida drivers back to the homestead. Good food, good times. I like that the music wasn't too loud. That could be a, a for me personally, that's a huge turn off in a restaurant, which you sometimes run into in like biker restaurants. They just kind of keep the music cranked. They had the music at a, I know it's not like an old man. They had a the music at a reasonable volume, which I really appreciate. The food was out of control. Uh, I like that they had vegan options. I'm not a vegan, okay? But I have friends that are, so it's nice to have like a place like this where I know I can take a whole bunch of different people. It's like, I can take all my biker buddies who want nothing but a steak or a steak sandwich or a burger. And I can take my friends who are, who are vegetarians and vegans here, my friends or pescatarians like i know there's gonna be people in the comments making fun of that like i can't believe there's vegan options at a biker bar but let me tell you it's it actually is really convenient for me and the sauces were choice and i don't i don't we paid for our food i paid full price for my food like maybe if i had called ahead and been like oh let me let me get my food for free i probably could have gotten some food for free but i'd rather pay for it i'd rather buy my meal and give an honest review of it and it was freaking awesome and everyone always says oh man you always love food and I usually do. But that's because I usually know what to order at a place. I know what I'm going to like. When I go to a place, I normally know I'm going to like it because I've already looked at it beforehand. And I have given food bad reviews before. When we were in Texas, I gave out a bad review. I've given a couple out before that as well. It just doesn't happen very often because I know what I like. As I always say, I've only got two ratings. It's either delicious or it'll make a turd. And everything at OCC Roadhouse was delicious. Again, I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that at all. Paid full price for my meal. Nothing was given to me for free. They didn't know we were coming. We just showed up and had our food. It's kind of annoying because like once you reach a certain size on YouTube and I don't even have a big channel. Like, do you think that my channel is big? Like you have not seen some of these other people doing YouTube. Like there are people in the millions of subscribers, people with twice as many subscribers as I do. And like, I don't care. I'm just saying once you reach a certain size, everyone just kind of assumes that anything you look at, you get for free. But that is absolutely not the case. Now I could probably try to, and I might be able to, but for me, it's really important that if I say something's good, if I actually like it, that it is, that it's completely unbiased. Like with this bike, when I did a review on it, my deal with Birch, which was a handshake deal, nothing in writing, I'm gonna take this bike and I'm allowed, I'm not, I didn't have to make a single video, they didn't require me to do anything. And I actually said to them, like, I'm allowed to say whatever I want about it. Even if I said, this this motorcycle is responsible for, for destroying the rainforest. You know, this is just the worst thing that ever happened to humanity. I could have said the Harley Davidson Road King was worse than the final episode of Game of Thrones. I was allowed to do that because that's the only way that I would uh, that I would take a bike on loan for them if I was allowed to do all those things, which is probably the reason why I don't get a lot of stuff. But <laughs> I will tell you, if I talk about something on a channel, that means that I actually like it. Now, just because I actually like something doesn't also always make it good. I'm not an expert. I just know what I like. And sometimes when I like something, it doesn't mean that that something is fit for mass consumption. It just means that it tickles my fancy is all, all right? Since I don't get stuff for free and I pay full price for all the stuff I have, some people wonder like, man, everything you give, almost everything you give gets a good review. Yeah, dude, that's because I do my research and I try to buy something that I know I'm gonna like. <laughs> like I don't I don't like to waste money. I don't wanna waste money on something that sucks. So I really try hard to make sure that whatever I spend my money on, I'm actually going to enjoy. So yeah, there's a bias towards good reviews here, okay? Hell yeah. Can't wait to, I think before we do the 1275 kit, we are gonna get some exhaust for the bike and of course rear suspension. Maybe we got, you know, race tech in the front. Maybe we'll do race tech suspension out back too. What do you guys think? Race tech is one of the cool ones because they'll actually make a piggyback shock exactly to your specifications, which most piggyback shocks, you really can't get them under 13 inches and race tech will make them however short you want. For exhaust, I'm pretty sure we're gonna go with super trap only because 
Okay, well, A, there's not a lot of exhaust options available for this bike. But even if there was, man, I just like Super Traps. I think Super Traps look cool. I think they sound cool. The fact that they're tunable is really awesome. It's just kind of an, an old school look, an old school exhaust. Oh yeah, Shaylee, so you ain't getting away from me today. She's taking off, but <laughs> you might have been to walk you might be able to walk away from me when I'm on the Bangkok bagger or when I'm on Lyrans Heritage. But not on Road King Kong, alright? Oh, you imagine Shay Lisi with a hundred horsepower sportster? She can be like a twelve-year-old boy just found his pecker for the first time. Unstoppable! If you could harness the willpower, if you could harness the willpower of a hormone-biddled twelve-year-old boy who's just discovered the joys of self-flagellation and channel that into something good, there'd be no more war on Earth, okay? That's a power that cannot be overcome. Unfortunately, it's got a one-track mind, usually. And how do I know? <laughs> Baby, I've been there. All right, y'all, this is bringing us to the end of this episode as filmed on another day because things have been, as always, insanely busy and they're about to be a lot busier, but for good reason, because I finally got my stickers back in stock. And this has been, let me tell you, an absolute smoke show because of UPS, they actually lost. I always complain about everything, but UPS literally lost my entire box of stickers. Absolutely gone, gone, gone with the wind, baby. Completely gone, and Lee Stewart had to reprint every single one of them but it was worth the wait. Rogue Lab MFG, Lee Stewart's company, is the absolute best in the business. You know that I only use Lee Stewart for my t-shirts because I want everything to be of the absolutely highest quality. So, uh, not that I thought my stickers were terrible before, but once Lee Stewart and Rogue Lab started doing stickers, yes, now they do my stickers as well. And they turned out absolutely freaking phenomenal. In crust we trust, baby. The FXR and the wizard you need to be to keep one of those things running. Uh, uh, not quite enough of a wizard right now because my FXR is still uh, just crusty and not trusty. Bozozuko love, baby. Y'all know I love Bozo bikes. So uh, we had to do a we had to do a design, of course, by the one and only Conrad, and made look absolutely amazing by Lee Stewart. And I did the, get this kanji actually translated by a real life Japanese person. So. I know that it phonetically says Brapstar. And of course we can't forget about Shay Lisi, mother of frogs, breaker of motorcycles, queen of the Florida men. Foxy Brown in the year 3000, baby. I don't know what exactly is gonna happen in space, but I sure hope there's babes and choppers there, and this is a direct representation of what I would like it to be like. You know what they say, if God rides a Harley, then the devil rides triumph, baby. Another banger from Conrad made just look absolutely freaking amazing by Lee Stewart. Like the detail of the tattoos on the devil's arm and all that stuff is just out of control. One of my favorites done by my man Burrito Breath is KLR Nukem High. Because let me tell you what, after the bombs drop, there's gonna be two things left roaming this barren scorched wasteland. KLRs and cockroaches. Keep Florida shady, all right, as told to you by the dirt mall fortune teller, the alligator. She'll give you some lucky lotto numbers and tell you what day of the week you die on for your left pinky finger and a few bucks. 
This is always a good one, another design from Rats and Wrath. When you're out on your piece of crap motorcycle, don't worry, you can stick this on the back and let everybody know that everything you own is junk. All right guys, there's all those and of course many more. And yes, I have a story for every single sticker I have available here. And of course, you know, the old favorites, my other ride is an existential crisis. Um, I got some really awesome new sticker pack stuff like these guys are a lot bigger than they were before and just done a lot better. These guys are new, the Godzilla stickers, big lizard in my backyard, really love this design too, again with the Brapstar kanji on it. But again, all this stuff is on www.brapstar.com. I'll have a link down in the bio and I've just turned back on international shipping for the first time. So let's put Shop Goblin to work, all right? She's got some envelopes to stuff. And as I always say, I don't really stock the store super often, so don't sleep on this stuff if you really want one, all right? Because they're gonna go quick. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.